Um, ladies and gentlemen, I think that uh, the debate tonight has uh, basically boiled down to, like I said earlier, uh, a match between two very different perspectives. Um, one from a pre supposedness perspective and one from a very evidentialist uh, perspective as myself. Now, I, I admit I've uh, actually come to this debate expecting um, a very much evidentialist style debate uh, with um, Samuel, because uh, that is how usually Christian apologists approach this, um, especially to members outside the faith. Um, so, but, but tonight's debate, uh, instead of going uh, point by point and to, to talk about that, uh, about the, the points of the debate, it, it, it really has boiled down to just one thing, which is uh, uh, how you approach things which are actually told to you. Now, um, this, it is very unfortunate that uh, I'm actually coming from this perspective, because this is, this is a perspective which you either have or you don't have. But what is also true is that this is a perspective that you can seek. The same way um, I sought out Christ when I was uh, uh, earlier, I came from a Taoist uh, or Buddhist background. It's a mix of the two. Uh, I sought him out and I, I really looked at it. Uh, I read the, the translation of the Akwan with a very seriousness. I was considering um, converting at one point in my life. And you need this very serious um, and very honest and very self-evaluating approach to looking at these things if you want to have a chance of actually understanding uh, how this thing actually work. So um, at this point, at this, at this uh, state in the debate, uh, we're going to have to uh, agree to disagree. So uh, basically, when we come to approach this, uh, the way I would look at it is uh, we first look at it from whether it makes sense or not. Um, perfection of the world doesn't work for me. Um, then you look for evidence, you look for uh, what actually is there to, to show you that everything is true, and that doesn't work for me either. So now what, what strikes me most about the days versus atheist debate is basically this. But imagine that you were born into this world, like the perspective we were talking about earlier, in a religiously neutral environment. Like any other child, um, you are endlessly inquisitive uh, to your questions, you're given honest explanations. This usually involves an explanation of physical phenomena, which through science we know a lot about today. For unknown cases, you're given an honest answer, I do not know, followed by a discussion of the possibilities, uh, philosophy if you like. Growing up in such an environment, if one day someone was to walk up to you, and I apologize if this um, sounds ridiculous to you, but it is meant to sound ridiculous, so there's no other way to put it. If someone was to walk up to you and tell you that he believes, then uh, a guy out of space and time waved his hands, or the appendages, and caused everything in it to exist in order to wait 14.6 billion years after they create a bunch of creatures, get really pissed off with them, mess with their language, flood their planet, pick a group special to him, and order these to murder others in his name, um, eventually impregnate himself into one of the females in order to get himself killed to be able to forgive these same creatures. If somebody were to come to tell you this story, and you do not have a preconceived notion, you do not have a presupposed tendency towards belief, then you are very likely to declare that this person is not right in the head. Now the unfortunate thing here, uh, is that whether an individual is capable of processing and, and recognizing this fact is contingent on whether he has already been indoctrinated. When I asked uh, a friend, I just made an atheist community, and I don't think he's here, uh, a few months back, what actually made him an atheist? He comes from a Christian background as well. And his answer in his own very special accent and voice, I read the Bible, man. <coughs> Many of you will know who that is. Now, two individuals, two individuals reading the Bible uh, gets vastly different impressions of it. And you need to know this uh, when you personally read the Bible. Two different perspectives can give you two very different readings, depending on what you already want to believe, or what, whether you're coming from a neutral perspective. Now, the church calls this guidance from the Holy Spirit. Now, I, call, uh, I, I think it is simple gullibility brought about by an insidious thing uh, of religious faith. Because what is faith exactly? Uh, what is this uh, feeling which uh, you want to ascribe everything to? Faith is belief in the absence of good reason or evidence. If you start with faith firmly holding to things you already think must be true, then all your reasoning, your actions, your conclusions will tend towards this. This is what religion teaches that we already know the answers and that the truth is a foregone conclusion. And that if you do not subscribe to this truth, you are damned forever. The fact of the matter is, we don't want to die. We want there to be justice in the world which obviously has none, and we want to be told that we have a purpose even though the physical world seems to be uh, to have no purpose at all. Indeed, the world sucks. But what we want or believe we deserve does not affect truth or reality in the slightest bit. There are positive things to be had from the from a realist from an atheist perspective as well. Through evolution, you know that your genes are the winners in, in the insanely tough competition of life. Not a competition God already jipped in your favor, but uh, a real competition. Think about it, of the uncountably vast number of creatures that ever lived, it was your ancestors that survived. 
Every single one of them managed to pass down their genes while uncomfortable others did not. You come from a family of champions, and evolution tells you that, science tells you this. Every single one of us uh, came from this perspective. And I just want to make uh, one last point, although I'm kind of out of time. Now, I, I personally prefer uh, the worldview which is rooted in reality and evidence. And Andrew Yen, the wife of my great hero, the late astronomer Carl Sagan, had this to say about him. Carl never wanted to believe, he wanted to know. And that is precisely what makes me an atheist. Thank you.